Здравствуйте! Как дела? You will not believe what I've got in store for you today. We're going to count to the point that you're going to be truly sick of it. We're going to count time, hours, minutes, all kinds of things. First, let's go ahead and see what we did last time. We reviewed the conjugations of first and second conjugation verbs. We have talked about some foreign language abilities. Вы говорите, вы пишете по-немецки, по-итальянски, etc. We have talked about expressing of it, so a lot of vocabulary, etc. Now, to go ahead and review what we did, let's look at the dialogue speaking foreign language once again. Tani. Да? Я читаю книгу на немецком языке. Интересная? Да, но я много не понимаю. Ты знаешь немецкий язык? О, нет. К сожалению, я не знаю немецкого языка. А ты учишь немецкий? Да, я учу немецкий язык в институте. Понятно. А ты уже говоришь по-немецки? Я плохо говорю. Я хорошо читаю и пишу, но плохо говорю и понимаю. А какие еще языки ты знаешь? Я знаю э, русский и английский. Русский я знаю очень хорошо, потому что это мой родной язык. Английский я уже учу 10 лет. Ну и тоже знаю его очень хорошо. Mm -hmm. И вот учу немецкий. Понятно. Ты хорошо знаешь русский, английский, учишь немецкий. Прекрасно. Да, но вот с немецкой у меня еще много проблем. Понятно. Желаю успеха. Очень хорошо. Этот диалог в какой-то мере обобщает то, что мы с вами сделали на прошлом уроке. This dialogue in a way summarizes everything that we did last lesson. This time our objectives are the following. Посмотрите, we're going to use some adverbs, mostly dealing with uh, how you uh, speak, how well you write in a foreign language. We'll review some time phrases very briefly, but then we'll go into exact time expressions, which will be things like, you know, 5.32 in the morning. Very tough stuff, very intensive. And we'll take a quick look at reflexive verbs. That's still to come. Очень хорошо. So, tying into those phrases such as я пишу по-немецки, я говорю по-японски, etc. Let's go ahead at a few. Uh, go ahead and look at a few of them. Посмотрите. Я хорошо читаю по-немецки. What we're doing here is using the adverb хорошо to describe how well reading in German is done here. So, those хорошо, плохо, неплохо, etc. All of the same ones that we've learned to use in things like How are you? Как дела? Хорошо, спасибо, or неплохо. We're going to use most of them. We're going to use some other adverbs that will make more sense in this particular context. So, take a look at another phrase. Я плохо понимаю по-немецки. I poorly understand German. Плохо describes how you понимаю, how you understand it. Хорошо? Another one. Я неплохо пишу по-немецки. I not badly, meaning pretty well, пишу по-немецки. I write German pretty well. Хорошо? So, so far we've used хорошо, плохо, неплохо, all that we know. And uh, the next one is a bit new. Я свободно говорю по-немецки. I fluently, freely speak German. Хорошо? So, the range that you may hear back asking the question uh, Вы говорите по-немецки? Here's the question. Вы говорите по-немецки? Do you speak German? Or any other language, right? You ask somebody, Вы говорите по-русски? The person may tell you a whole bunch of things. Here are some possibilities. Take a look at that. Чуть-чуть. Usually pronounced as чуть-чуть. A tiny little bit. You may actually have a совсем чуть-чуть. A completely little bit. Just barely, barely speak or write or read, etc. Then from there we go to плохо, poorly, or очень плохо, very badly, 
My German truly is horrible. It's a я очень плохо говорю по немецки. Okay, then немного right underneath плохо a little or below it немножко same thing a little bit more colloquial and of course you can use совсем with them just completely tiny bit uh, very little bit so совсем немного or simply немножко okay then you can go to more positive things such as неплохо so I speak Spanish pretty well я неплохо говорю по-испански you could even say очень неплохо very not bad right pretty well so я очень неплохо пишу по-японски I write Japanese pretty well хорошо well good очень хорошо very well and then finally свободно freely fluently with no trouble whatsoever хорошо that's the range that we've got so you ask somebody вы говорите по-немецки speak German the person may actually tell you something like да, свободно я немец yeah, fluently I am German хорошо? who knows or maybe if one doesn't that person would say нет, не говорю no, I do not speak нет, не говорю хорошо? or even нет, совсем не говорю совсем is usually used in negative phrases either совсем немножко completely a little bit or like here Completely do not speak, meaning I speak none at all. Хорошо? Отлично. Ну что ж, uh, next thing for us to review would be time. I'm sure you remember how we said things like one hour or one o'clock. We had a whole chart full of those. Let's review that. So, one o'clock or one hour is час or один час. Один is often omitted, dropped. So, two o'clock, два часа. Same as two hours. Just depends on the context, on how it's used. Три часа. Three hours. Четыре часа. Four hours. So, час, the one form is one. Then two through four, we've got the часа form, with an I at the end. And then, at five, we're going to get something different. That is часов. I'm sure you recall. Пять часов. Five o'clock. Шесть часов. Six o'clock. Семь часов. Seven. Восемь часов. Eight. Девять часов. Either nine hours or nine o'clock. Just depends on where you use it. Десять часов. Ten o'clock. Одиннадцать часов. Try that one once again. Одиннадцать часов. Одиннадцать часов. And then двенадцать часов. So, that meant three o'clock or three hours, for three hours. For example, you could have a sentence, Я читаю книгу три часа. I've been reading a book for three hours. That could be an answer to a question, Сколько времени ты читаешь книгу? Here's that question. Сколько времени ты читаешь книгу? How much time have you been reading this book? Да? How long have you been reading? So, сколько времени is either what time is it or for how long again it depends on the context not that hard so the answer to that question once again was я читаю книгу три часа I've been reading the book three hours хорошо, отлично or another phrase you could have something like сейчас три часа ночи now is three o'clock at night ночи, in the middle of the night да? хорошо, that could be an answer to the question Сколько сейчас времени? You don't have to break up сколько and времени. You could just say сколько времени сейчас? What time is it now? Хорошо? But more commonly, сколько сейчас времени? Okay? So, and the answer to that once again was сейчас три часа ночи. That ночи is what I'd like to remind you about as well. That was of night. Хорошо? Uh, we have also seen things like шесть часов утра. Six o'clock in the morning. Хорошо? And also, два часа дня. The whole phrase is, сейчас два часа дня. Now it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Literally, two hours of day. Хорошо? And then finally, сейчас восемь часов вечера. Eight o'clock in the evening. Хорошо? 
Отлично. Let me remind you how that whole idea of four o'clock at night, but seven o'clock in the evening is done in Russian. Take a look at this chart. So from approximately 5 a.m., maybe 4 a.m. till 12 p.m., that is noon, everything is gonna be utra. That's the morning in the Russian understanding of it. Хорошо? Okay, so from noon until about 5, 6 p.m., that's gonna be dnya. Okay, so 4 o'clock in the afternoon is gonna be 4 часа дня. Okay, maybe around 5 o'clock you're going to start referring to it as evening. Maybe 6, who knows? Depending on, you know, when the time, uh, when the sun goes down, etc. So, 5 p.m. till about midnight, all the way through midnight, is gonna be вечера rather than ночи. So, 11 at night, in English, in Russian, 11 часов вечера, still in the evening, вечера. And then from midnight until whatever you consider to be morning, 5 o'clock maybe, you're gonna call it ночи. Хорошо? Отлично. So, this is how you ask at what time something is happening. You would say во сколько, and then follow it up with whatever you're asking about. Like, во сколько начинается фильм? At what time does the movie begin? Хорошо? So, to say at that time, not just to say it is one o'clock, сейчас, час, but rather it begins at one. Just add a v to what you just saw, that entire bunch. Simply add a v to it and you're going to end up with saying at that time. Take a look and see. В час, at one, sometimes в один час. Very seldom though. Usually at one, в час, that could be в час ночи, one at night, or в час дня, one in the afternoon. В два часа, в три часа, at three, в четыре часа. Now that does not mean for four hours, but it's exactly at four o'clock. В четыре часа, хорошо? That could be в четыре часа ночи, at four at night, или может быть в четыре часа дня, four in the afternoon, хорошо? And then, just as you would expect, в пять часов, at five. And since в should be run into the next word, just make it flow. В пять часов, в шесть часов, в семь часов, at seven. That could be в семь часов утра, seven in the morning. В семь часов вечера, at seven in the evening. В восемь часов, at eight. В девять часов. If you feel like you don't want to say часов any more than you have to, drop it. It'll be all right. Just say в девять at nine. You could simply say в девять вечера at nine in the evening. Хорошо? So that's how all of those are going to go. Хорошо. Naturally, not everything begins right on the hour, which brings us to the next measurement, and that is minutes. Хорошо? One minute. Take a look and see how we say that. Одна минута. Or simply минута. Okay, so for one we've got минута. Then for two through four, минуты. Such as две минуты. Минута being feminine makes us use this feminine form for two. And it is две rather than два. Хорошо? So two minutes. Две минуты. Три минуты. Three minutes. Четыре минуты. Four and going on to 5 minute, 5 minutes. Go ahead and take a look at the next one. 6 minute, 6 minutes. That could be duration of time. Whatever lasted 6 minutes. Or it's, let's say, 106. Час 6 minute. Да? 1 and 6 minutes. Хорошо? 7 minute, 8 minute, 8 minutes, 9 minute, 10 minute. Looks like a great opportunity to review numbers. That's just what we're doing. Next batch. We have got одиннадцать минут. Please say it with me. Одиннадцать минут. Двенадцать минут. Twelve minutes. Тринадцать минут. Четырнадцать минут. Пятнадцать минут. Please repeat it because knowing how to say those numbers correctly is truly crucial. So back to пятнадцать минут. And the next bu uh, bunch, извините, шестнадцать минут, семнадцать минут, 
18 minut, 19 minut, 20 minut. Remember what I said about uh, the way you count things? For one, you've got one form, like один час. Then for two through four, you've got another one, часа. So два, три, четыре часа. But then for five, you get часов. So here we're doing the same thing. Start out with минута, then минуты, then минут. But that third form, like часов or минут, only lasts through 20. Once you hit 21, you're going to go back to минута or час. So 21 hours or 21 o'clock? That uh, doesn't sound right. You would have 21 час or 21 минута. Take a look and see how that goes. So, 21 минута, and then for 2 through 4, we're back to минуты. So, 22 минуты, 22 minutes, 23 минуты, 24 минуты, and then at 5 again, we switch to минут. So, 25 минут, 26 минут, 27 минут, etc., etc. Now, we've got 1 through 20 pretty much covered. How about 30? That would be 30 минут. Хорошо? But then at 31, you're going to get a минута again, right? So 31 minutes. 31 минута. Хорошо? 32. 32 минуты. Хорошо? 35. 35 минут. Очень хорошо. And then 39 минут. Прекрасно. Which is the time for 40. 40. 40 минут. There it is. The next one. 40 минут. Хорошо? 40. 40. Прекрасно. 41 minutes. Same idea. It's back to one. So use минута again. 41 минута. Хорошо? Теперь how about 43? 43 минуты. Хорошо? 46. 46 минут. Хорошо? 49. 49 минут. Time for 50. And it is 50. 50, if you run it quickly, 50. So, 50 minutes, 50 minut. Once you hit 51, back to minuta. 51 minuta. This is tedious, but it's good practice. Bear with me, please. 52 minutes, 52 minuty. 54, 54, there it is. 58, 58. That's it so far. Хорошо. Okay. Uh, now let's go ahead and try to combine what we've learned. What you see in front of you here is Vadin Chas 30 minut nochi. And what that is is at 1.30 at night. The whole thing is at 1 hour 30 minutes of the night, right? But if you want to say at 1.30, just say Chas 30. What time? Afternoon, dnia, night, nochi. What we have here once again is час 30 ночи. Хорошо. And another example. В 6 часов 40 минут утра. That's the whole thing. At 6 hours and 40 minutes of the morning. That just means at 6.40 in the morning. If you know we're talking about morning, skip the утра part. And of course, skip the часов and минут. Don't bother with them. People will understand 6.40. So, в 6.40 at 6.40. If you want to be time-specific, time of the day, в 6.40 утра. Очень хорошо. Another example. В 2 часа 32 минуты дня. At 2.32 in the afternoon. Or just boil it all down to в 2.32 минуты. Or в 2.32. Хорошо? Отлично. If something's happening at 3.35, which is the next example you've got, в 3 часа 35 Minut nochi, the whole thing, and it's in the middle of the night. Boil it down to 3.35. Хорошо? Отлично. Let's just start reducing those to something more pronounceable. В 9.39, at 9.39. Хорошо? Or в 4.50, 4.50. In the afternoon, so в 4.50 дня. Хорошо? At 11.58, в 11.50. 58. That, of course, could be вечера, in the evening, or uh, утра, I presume. Хорошо, nobody speaks that way. So unless you're doing things right on the minute, you can always say for what we just saw, 
approximately at 12, and that's the next one. It says, примерно в 12 дня. If it is in fact happening in the afternoon, if you're talking about that happening at night, you would say, примерно в 12 ночи, and that's the next one. Примерно в 12 ночи. Очень хорошо. I don't know about you, but I think this review of numbers has been pretty tedious and excruciating. So let's get to something a little simpler, just a plain dialogue, which I will take apart right here in this lesson, let you hear it again, and that will be a great illustration of how time is referred to. Пожалуйста. Таня, что ты делаешь? Как что? Как всегда читаю русскую газету. А ты что делаешь? Я пишу план урока в университете. А во сколько начинается твой урок? Обычно я начинаю лекцию в 10 часов, но сегодня она начинается в 10.30. Таня, а что вы делаете сегодня вечером? А сегодня вечером мы идем в кино. Да, и как называется фильм? Маска Зорра. А. Говорят, ничего. Серьезно? Хм. А во сколько начинается? Примерно в 9. Да, утро? Как утро? Конечно, вечером. А, ну да, да, да. Ну, пока. Пока. So, how was that? I was saying that that would be something better than what we did. I'm not sure that it's actually better. I think it's the time to review that saying из двух зол выбирай меньшее. Out of two evils, choose the lesser one. То, из двух зол выбирай меньшее. In fact, that dialogue seemed rather ridiculous and let's get through it pretty quickly. Привет, Таня, что ты делаешь? Hi, Таня, what are you doing? Как что? What do you mean what? This как is often used as как? What do you mean? How can that be that you're asking that dumb question? Как что? Как всегда, as always, читаю русскую газету. I'm reading a Russian newspaper. Хорошо. And the next? А ты, Дмитрий, что делаешь? And what are you, Дмитрий, doing? By the way, we've switched to P here. Informal, very casual, and I answer. А я пишу план урока в университете. And I'm writing a plan of a lesson. So, a lesson plan at the university. Хорошо. And the next question. А во сколько начинается твой урок? Now, that's interesting stuff. Начинается. Begins. The lesson begins with that sigh at the end. Okay, but I answer the question saying, обычно я начинаю лекцию в 10. Usually I begin, not the lesson begins, but I begin, so there is no sia at the end. That's the reflexive verb with a sia and regular kind without. So, usually I begin the lecture at 10, но сегодня она начинается в 10.30, but today it begins at 10.30. Хорошо. And the next question that I feel like asking is, Таня, что вы делаете сегодня вечером? And what are you, plural, because I'm saying tea to her, doing tonight? So I'm not inviting myself into her plans. I'm just saying, what are you guys doing? Okay? And she says, мы идем в кино. We're going to the movies. А как называется фильм? And how is the movie called? And she answers, маска Зорро. Mask of Zorro, I guess. Which more or less times the time when this was recorded. Говорят, что ничего. They say it's nothing. What in the world is she saying? She's saying ничего, meaning not bad. They say it's all right, not too bad, etc. That's the Russian psyche for you. Ничего, nothing, meaning okay. So, and the next question, а во сколько он начинается? And when does it begin? And the answer, примерно в девять, approximately at nine. And a truly dumb question on my part, утра? In the morning? I was asking about evening plans. Нет, конечно. Вечера. No, of course not. In the evening. Ну, пока. Пока. So, bye. Bye. So, good time to wrap it up. Хорошо. Okay. A few interesting things in there. Uh, and I would like you to actually, now that you know exactly what's happening in it, see it once again. There you are. Таня, что ты делаешь? Как что? Как всегда, читаю русскую газету. А. а ты что делаешь? Я пишу план урока в университете. А во сколько начинается твой урок? Обычно я начинаю лекцию в 10 часов, но сегодня она начинается в 10.30. 
Таня, а что вы делаете сегодня вечером? А сегодня вечером мы идем в кино. Да, и как называется фильм? Маска Зорра. А. Говорят, ничего. Серьезно? Хм. А во сколько начинается? Примерно в 9. Да, утро? Как утро? Конечно, вечером. А, ну да, да, да. Ну, пока. Пока. Очень хорошо. В этом диалоге, помимо того, что мы с вами научились просто спрашивать о том, что вы делаете, когда начинается что-то, aside from learning very simple chit-chat, what are you doing, we're going to the movies, when does something begin, there is a really good set of phrases there. Here's the first. Во сколько начинается урок? Во сколько means at what time, of course. Начинается, begins, and what begins is at the end of the sentence. So, во сколько начинается урок? At what time begins the lesson? Since урок is what begins, literally we're saying начинается begins itself. Хорошо? Окей. Okay. And my answer was, лекция начинается в 9 or в 10 утра. The lecture begins at 10 in the morning. Хорошо? So once again, it's the lecture that begins. It doesn't begin something, but begins itself. That's how we've got the ся there at the end. Хорошо? If I were to say that I begin a lecture, which we do next, is я начинаю. We don't put a ся there. So, я начинаю лекцию в 10.30. I begin the lecture at 10.30. Please note that 10.30 having a period between 10 and 30. That's how we do it in Russian. So, looks like ten dollars and thirty cents, doesn't it? Хорошо. In fact, it gets even more confusing once you start dealing with more complex numbers. If you've got something like, you know, ten point three. In Russian, that's actually going to be ten comma three. But a lot of Europe, uh, a lot of European countries do the same thing. So, you may have seen that before. Очень хорошо. Okay. I uh, think we've had plenty of grammar. We have counted to the point of exhaustion. Before we quit, let's go ahead and look at a commonly used saying, and that is медленно, но верно, which means slowly but surely. It's really not a saying as, a, as an adverb would be, I mean, as a proverb would be. It's more of a cliché, and while for a native speaker to use clichés like slowly but surely we're coming to the end of this long and exhausting lesson seems ridiculous. For somebody who's studying a foreign language, it is really helpful to learn those, use them as fillers. They show that you know the language. They give you a chance to waste a little bit of time and actually think through what you're gonna say. So things like unfortunately, к сожалению, uh, slowly but surely, to tell you the truth, frankly speaking, all of those parasites, you should think of them as really good friends. Хорошо? Okay, so, on that happy note, let's go ahead and see what we did today. Here's the overview. So what we did today is looked at the use of adverbs, in addition to verbs there, like я хорошо знаю, я плохо читаю, etc. We looked at a few quick time phrases and then we spent most of the lesson dealing with exact time expressions. A lot of counting. Looked at a little bit of reflexive verbs. Очень хорошо. Your homework is going to be to conjugate a few more verbs. Начинать, учиться, кончаться. Some reflexive, reflexive, some not. Of course, practice the vocabulary. Try applying the dialogue to your classroom situation and also read all of the texts, all of the little dialogues in the book on pages 169 through 171. That's quite a bit, but you know most of it. Очень хорошо. На этом мы с вами закончим. Всего доброго. До свидания.